Hello? Here he is. Sorry about that. It's all good. It's uh, symbolism of uh, what's happening in the construction world, right? Well, I was doing um, my own construction today, demo in my floor. Need a new oh, kitchen yeah. before the holidays. I got you. I got you. So, Greg, thanks for finding time to spend uh, with us. And uh, we're going to record it because we had a bunch of people and then they dropped out. So, anyway, we'll be using that video, even though it's live right now. Okay. Through the week, we have a lot of, uh, you know, we have over 3,000 followers on Instagram. We have a lot of other stuff. So you'll be a famous and, uh, and uh, uh, the whole thing. I've always wanted to be famous. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but thanks for finding your time. Uh, so before we start, Greg, tell me, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, GC2. All right, so the, G uh, the GC2. About the company, about you personally, how you got there, what did you, anything you want to tell us. So All right. about it. I started the GC2 group a little over a year ago um, as an owner's representative representative company for project management, um, as well as an estimating company. Uh, my background is actually I started in construction as an assistant estimator. So it's always kind of followed me through. What basically made me want to start the company is I wanted to get out there and do my own thing. Um, I wanted to kind of be in charge. And I, I have a lot of passion for construction. And I wanted to be able to show that and help others who may not have the ability or don't have the resources to pull a project manager or an estimator on staff. Um, I offer a lot of uh, like estimating experience, um, especially for subcontractors. So I, I instead it of doing so, it, so good. So, let me just tell. So for people who are because we have a lot of people who are not in the industry and a lot of languages that language that you and I use. So what is a job of an estimator? Is it someone who just uh, goes into a construction site or a project and says? It's going to cost a million dollars, $10 million, or there's more to it? No, there's, there's more to it. They, they, like this, they, basically, the devil's in the details, and the estimator mm -hmm. is really responsible for going into the details of the project. And, and that's what I do, and that's, that's what I know. I, I've been down the road where you've gotten a budget before, and nobody looked at the details, and you're going through construction, and you get burned. Um, and yeah. that's, that's kind of what I'm looking to so Will bring, someone will someone come to you? So sorry. Uh, will someone so bring you my dog before? <laughs> Why not? No, look, dogs are, be, are being followed uh, everywhere on social media. So uh, and cats. Uh, so does someone bring you parallel to a general contractor or instead of a general contractors or uh, where do people hire someone like you, like a uh, someone who does estimation? Uh, both general contractors and subcontractors pre construction. During construction, um, I offer as I could work with a subcontractor just as much as I could work with a general contractor. For a subcontractor, I could produce a bunch of takeoffs marked up on a PDF with a detailed Excel summary so they could put their number to it and be confident that they covered all the details and they're not going to get on site after they've signed the contract and lose money or um, – you know, or fight have to with the develop right. or change but orders. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's yeah. what I'm looking so, to do. How, how do you, um, and how, how do you come up with it? I mean, do you, do you look at the plans? Do you uh, look at the site? Is it a combination of what's actually on the paper versus actually what's in reality? Yeah, I, how can, do you, I could do either. The question is, how do you limit, how do you, I know, but what, if it was up to you, okay, what's the best way? Because we all know from construction, there's a difference between the, the what's on the paper or the architect design or the, the engineer's design and the reality of building a building. There's such, I mean, one right. of the reasons I established a mass is because we want to take a section, or in our case, it's the market, uh, it's, a, um, it's the material portion and bring more organizational transparency to that world. So from your experience, where are the challenges? Are they more in the plans, in the reality? And what's the biggest challenge you're dealing with in construction? The, the, the biggest challenge is that what is on paper is, cannot always be in reality or it's missing the details. So to answer your question in the beginning, the best way to do it is if it's an existing building or an existing project, I would prefer to go on site and start my, start my estimate or take off from there. If it's only pre-construction and drawings, then I ask for all the paperwork and review it thoroughly ahead of time. Um, as best as possible and go that route. But I got you. And so you, you think that your, your experience from your experience of so many years, 
you you think that the the problem starts with the architect not giving enough details in the plans uh, or not understanding how construction works? What would you say is the challenge from I don't want every architect gap, like, in the world to hate me after this, but no, it's, the, well, the, the, the challenge, better, the challenge so, 100% it, is just because you drew it on lines with a piece of paper does not mean it's actually feasible to be built that way. And I think a lot of it is a, is an, un, is a misunderstanding on the architect's end of not, not really knowing how it goes in the field or the technical aspect of how it goes together. And I, there's a huge gap between the developer the GC, the subcontractor, and the architect when it comes to that. And, and what I'm looking to do is kind of bring that all together before they get to a point where you're standing just staring at a blank wall or staring at a detail that you can't do. So good. By the way, uh, Bram, who's an architect also, is uh, sending us a little emoji. I don't know if it's crying or laughing, but he's responding to your comments. But uh, uh, but but that, that that's a really uh, great point I want to cover. So one of the things we're doing at a mass is, for example, we're giving access to a mass for architectural students, so they can uh, get to know material before they go on site. So you're saying, well, if I understand correctly, one of the challenges is that this intellectual world that architects works in, right? And in reality, those details are not done properly or not designed properly. So when you go to the construction site, it's not being implemented. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, got you. And and do you think it's because, and again, I don't think it's it's about us learning together. That's why we're doing that Instagram live uh, once a week to kind of learn some things together from different angles. So, do you think it's about um, the architects being disconnected from construction side? Do you think it's about the people who actually do the work don't have the sophistication to implement the vision of the architect? What do you think is the disconnect? It it could be it could definitely be a combination of both. Um, I think it, a lot of it is the technical aspect that the architect doesn't understand, but it also could be the, the technical skill of the subcontractor. Maybe they haven't done something before or the material they're not used to. There are a lot of new materials out there that these architects are on the up and up and, and more aware of sometimes than the field. Um, but uh, uh, looking at all of this ahead of time, you could eliminate a lot of the confusion or the disconnect. Um, and that's kind of where I would stand as the, as the middleman, the liaison, to, to bring this all together so that the architect's you know, vision comes to life, but the subcontractor has ease when they're building it and they, they understand the actual construction and the parts and the pieces. I got you. I got you. Good. So that actually leads us to the next question. Um, so when it comes to material, because like, I, like you know, a mast is really in the world of material and bringing education and transparency to that, to that world. In the world of material, do you see much of a change in the last uh, 10 years uh, in the world of construction material? Well, um, look, I haven't really been in it for 10 years, but in the years that I've been in it. Whatever you're seeing, you know, since in you started. The, in the years you know, that I have, in the that, years right? that I have yeah. been in it, I do see yeah. uh, a change in material. There are more man-made materials out there that are of much better quality than they were, from my understanding, in the past. Uh, the technology to produce these materials, to cut these materials, to measure these materials, has changed. Uh, just for instance, a countertop subcontractor now could come in and, and measure for a countertop all digitally and send it back to his machine and have it cut. Whereas before you were taking every measurement by hand, you were drawing it on a piece mistake. of paper. Yeah, and if you made a mistake, one inch or half an inch mistake, it doesn't fit perfectly. So by right. using the robotics and laser, we can make things much more specific, right? Right. Or much more uh, exact. And then, okay, so that that's the kind of, um, the, where technology comes to construction and helps uh, make less mistake. What about the actual material? Do you see change in material uh, in in the fabrication of it? Do you see new kind of insulation, new kind of, because uh, for example, I, you, you probably know about uh, local law 97, which is completely gonna transform the way people do business because of the environmental impact of buildings. So as someone who's on site every day, you know, in, in construction site, do you see a change in that? Do you see architects catching up to it, to the new material? Do you see contractors learning how to work with this with new material? It's see, okay. No, no, no. I, I see the architects do catch up to it. And I think that's kind of where some of the disconnect comes in the field because 
the the field guy or the subcontractor isn't catching it right away until you get to the point of inspection. Um, and that's that's the change. But there has been a change in material. There is definitely a change in uh, what the subcontractors are purchasing or, or what's being required by the city uh, for environmental purposes and, uh, you know, the different codes. What, 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 what are the... When you're on site on a daily basis, uh, what, what's the technology you guys use? Walk us through like the different places, because most of the stuff, it's a lot of labor and physical work and carrying stuff. But if you kind of went through the day, and what will be, what are the t- technologies you use? And you mentioned some of them, for example, the cutting of the material is much more specific, laser uh, based and, you know, and robotics based. But what other technology you guys are using right now? One of the best things is our phone or an iPad. We're no longer carrying around rolls of, of plans and, and um, you know, spec books. We could pull it all up digitally. We can mark it up on site, take pictures for punch list, exactly show the exact location where the error is. Uh, we can... So that's, that's one of those management software like Procore or similar to that? Procore, actually... yeah, mm-hmm. Procore, yeah. Bluebeam, um, there's one other I'm drawing a blank right now, but yes. Fine, whatever you're using, it's not we're, we're not pitching them. You know, we just uh, you know. <laughs> so one. So one way is for you to be more mobile by carrying a, a tablet with you and taking pictures and looking at the plans and whether it's the architectural plans or mechanical plans and kind of see where the mistake is and match uh, pictures and other things, right? Correct. Okay. What What about material? Are you using any? Uh, any uh, ability to calculate the amount of material or are you buying material online right now? Uh, we buy some material online in the field. Um, it depends. A lot of it still right now is coming through the old school stream of calling the sales rep and, and doing the takeoff, um, which isn't exactly always 100% efficient, especially well, when you're trying to compare to prices. Yeah, we're here to change that, you know, but, uh, but that that's interesting. So, so, you still, in that perspective, there's old school. Would you say that uh, real estate construction is uh, uh, at the cutting edge of technology? It's kind of in the middle. It's back. How would you mark the construction um, in the world of technology? Because here we are. We're talking on Instagram Live, and we talk on, everybody talks on Zoom right now. Like, do you feel like um, construction is a product of the future, a product of the present, or a product of, of the past? No, the, the, it's a, I think it's a combination of a product of the past and a product of the future. Um, there's, a, there's definitely a good middle ground in construction, and I think it'll, it'll always remain that way because, yes, there is great technology out there to, to that are putting up, you're putting up 3D printing buildings now, but you're still never going to be able to replace a good set of hands and a hammer. Um, so I think that's one of the interesting facts about construction is it will always move forward with technology, but it will never eliminate the old school factor that actually makes it what it is. Gotcha. What do you think about uh, prefabricated material? Don't you think that's going to change things? I, I, I put buildings up and I've dealt with prefabricated materials and it changes it to an extent, but it, it changes the schedule more than it actually changes the construction. It allows you to put a building up much quicker. It allows you to turn over a building quicker and get in and out as a subcontractor. You're going there to make your final connections, to do your checks, to do your, so you're going in and getting your, your money quick. It, it changes your bread and butter aspect of the business, but it doesn't eliminate the set of hands. I got you. So Greg, if we spoke, it's 2020 now, and there's two questions I have. First of all, uh, what's the impact of COVID on the construction site from your perspective? Like you, know, you get, you've been now working in the COVID uh, world. You, you work in Jersey, New Jersey, right? Um, uh, so I'm, I'm a, in New, New Jersey, Jersey and, and Philadelphia yeah. and New York. Oh, Delta, yeah. Delta. I've been cool. in all so three. You have a broader exposure. Very good. So what, uh, what is um, the difference between if I walk into a construction site now versus a year ago? If you walk into a construction site now, you're going to see everybody with masks on. You're going to see sanitized stations, hand-washing stations. If you walked in a year ago, the only guy wearing a mask was maybe the guy doing the insulation or the mm. guy that was salt-cutting something. Um, you know, the sanitizer wasn't always readily available. 
but now you're going to see you're going to see that and you're going to see much um higher respect for health you're going to see some less guys crowded in in one single area you know there are a lot of guidelines that have to be filled out there and new york for one is definitely checking the guidelines on a daily basis you have to take temperatures do, do, sign logs do you think that Uh, let's say you know hopefully a year from now there'll be vaccine let's just say we're going more to more normal life um do you think that there's fundamental changes that happen because of covid that we're not going to be the same uh, or do you think it's just a period because we need to take care of it we're going to be very careful about sanitation all the other stuff you're saying do you think do you see a fundamental movement to somewhere else or maybe maybe not uh you know it's it's hard to say i, I think fundamentally it, it's going to change and it's going to stay uh to to a degree the the health the health consciousness on site's going to stay in place i don't think mm-hmm. that's that's uh you know i don't think that's really ever going to disappear fully um but maybe it may lax up a little bit yeah i got you very good so if you if you visited a construction site 5 years from now or you know how different will do you think it's going to be Um uh, what was that? I'm asking like if you if we visited a construction site 5 years from now how do you think things are going to change in the next 5 years in the construction world? And you're going to see more robotics. I I would definitely definitely think you're going to see more more robotics. Um you're you're still going to see people but you're going to see more more technology and more machinery um to perform to perform the jobs in in my opinion. So you 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 see a world where there's small robots basically doing taping or sanding or anything I don't know I don't know in 5 years them, you're going to see that yeah. but that's yeah. in 5 years I don't think I think that's a little much to 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 see in the next 5 years but maybe the yeah. next 15 or 20 you're going to see parts of that but you and you're definitely going to see more prefabricated parts coming to site. Mm-hmm. Um gotcha. panels with windows already in more modular style buildings as they as they um they they come up with more accurate solutions for layouts and uh yeah. stuff like that. I'm sorry, the lighting in here is bad. So yeah, the lighting is exactly. You look like one of those uh, uh you one of the, we look like one of those 60 minutes characters when no one wants to see your face so you know so you don't get caught by the mafia something <laughs> you know? so because i have very strong light and you don't okay so uh, so greg thank you so much um that's really helpful we love the fact that we get a chance once a week to speak with people who actually have hands on on site uh, experience and look uh, mass is really uh, committed and we but, but i don't know if you know but we just opened florida north carolina uh boss oh here you are we forgot how to look at you exactly <laughs> boston north carolina um uh new jersey new york uh, Flo- uh florida california so we've gone really fast because there's a demand for some kind of uh, not some kind of transparency uh, ability to order everything online everything you're talking about uh seeing exposing yourself different things so we love that conversation of very hands on uh people who actually experience in day to day construction we really appreciate it. um so again gc2 right group uh and uh, you look at you're working in Philly in New Jersey and in New York and um look, you know doing consulting doing construction management doing uh, uh estimation and we would love to uh have you in the future and um thanks for your time no thank you for having me and i That's look good. forward okay. to to utilizing a mass as it as it grows and and being a part of the the growing of the uh the program and the company awesome thanks so much thank you everybody take care take care